This is our second QQT from Unit 2. A block on a spring. A block of mass, capital M, is attached to a spring of negligible mass and can slide on a horizontal surface along the X direction as shown above. There is friction present between the block and the surface. The spring exerts no force on the block when the center of the block is located at X equals 0. At the instant shown above, the block is located at X equals 0 and is moving towards the right with a speed V equals V naught. Okay, so friction is the only kind of bugaboo here, but we can deal with that. Part A says for the instant shown above with the block located at X equals 0 moving to the right, predict the direction of the net force on the block. So it's moving to the right. The spring is relaxed, so the spring is not exerting a force on it. However, there is friction. So the net force is to the left, right? Because even though the spring is not exerting a force on it at that point, friction is showing. So I think a justification there, uh, the answer is to the left and a direction, and a, excuse me, a justification gives you one point. Okay, part B says, or gives us a graph with uh, force versus uh, displacement next to it. And what they ask us to do is on the same graph, uh, draw a graph of the net force on the block as a position of X. So the graph that I have drawn here uh, indicates the force exerted by the spring. Um, now we've got to add the net force uh, due to friction. Um, and as the block is moving to the right, friction is always going to be the le to the left. So that's going to just bring the acceleration more or and the, and the force, therefore, uh, more negative. So the line that we should draw for the net force is going to be something like this, okay, parallel to that. And I know that, one, that line's a lot thicker, but that's okay. Um, so the net force is the spring plus friction, okay? Okay. Um, since the frictional force is always in the negative direction, that just takes the whole graph and shifts it down, actually. So one point indicating that the net force is negative at x equals 0. That's right here. And that's what we just said in part A, is that the net force is negative. One point for the graph. Now, they say the graph is always either above or below the spring force. I can't justify putting it above the spring force unless you define x as the other direction. But it says one point if you have a graph that's either always above or always below the spring force, and then one point for a straight line parallel to the original. So three points total there. Part C asks if our graph is consistent with what we said in part A. And well, at part A, I said that the net force would be to the left, which is negative in this scheme. And like we said before, the net force at x equals zero is negative, so my answer is yes. So one point for uh, an answer that says yes it, uh, reinforces my claim, and then um, one point for a justification. Now, if you said to the right, <laughs> and then you just said no here, then I think you get that point uh, for realizing that it doesn't uh, agree. So you can get that second point even if your answers are wrong. So on to part D. DI. In the figure above, a block of mass M has come to a rest at a location to the right of the spring's equilibrium position. The spring has a spring constant K, there's mu K, there's mu S. We're going to draw a free body diagram of the block at that point. Now you might think, wait, how can it come to a rest? But <laughs> there's still friction. So let's deal with the X direction, okay? Um, sorry, this is not a great drawing. The spring is pulling it to the left because we are past x equals zero spring. I'm gonna put f spring there because what's keeping it back? Friction, right? And it's actually static friction because it's at rest, okay? So I think you could just put f, f for this and f spring, it doesn't matter. Don't forget the normal force and the weight, but that's our free body diagram. So one point, for taking care of the y direction, that's fn and fg, one point total. One point for the spring force to the left, one point for friction to the right, that's three points total for that free body diagram. Now, part two, we want the maximum displacement. How far can we get past 
x equals zero, right? How far can we stretch that spring and keep it motionless? So this is another one of those problems where we need Fs max, okay? There's no kinetic friction here because it's not moving. We've got to deal with Fs max. No big deal. It's just mu s times the normal force, um, but mu s is different than mu k, so make sure you tell them that you know that. Uh, in this case, mu s, I'm um, excuse me, in this case, the normal force is just mg. So that's the net maximum force that friction can provide. Now we have uh, equilibrium here. So the spring force, which is kx, is equal to fs max, which we just decided was mu s times mg. I'm not going to worry about positive or negative signs because the forces are equal. So we're just saying left equals right. Okay, and we don't have to worry about negative signs here. Um, a little algebra gives us x equals mu s times mg over k. That is our expression for how far can it go. And this, um, well, let's just do the rubric here. One point for realizing that the spring force has to be equal to friction. One point for correct expressions for those two. And one point for the answer. And I just want to add that at this point, we could do all sorts of factor of change questions or, hey, what, what if, how could I make this X bigger? Well, I could use, have more friction or a less stiff spring, right? Or a heavier box, lots of different ways to go. Although this problem doesn't do that. So that's the end of the block on a spring question.